Hmm. Okay, so good morning, good afternoon to everyone and welcome to this second part of today's lecture. The next lecture is about structural stability and bifurcation of local dimension in piecewise difference system and will be given by Thiago de Carvalho. So Thiago, please, when you want. Thank you, Douglas. Let's uh, restart the, the course. So, see. <laughs> uh, not working, okay. So today we will talk about uh, the qualitative theory about PSOI's move vector field. But today we will talk about the structural stability about these this kind of vector fields. Well, uh, two vector fields, Z and Z tilde, remembering that, that Z is, a, is given by a, a pair of these move vector fields and Z tilde is given by another pair of these move vector fields uh, defined in neighborhoods of the origin are sigma equivalent Okay, there is this letter first here. If there is this, an orientation preserving homeomorphism that sends orbits uh, of Z to orbits of Z tilde, but also it sends uh, the sets the set sigma to the set sigma tilde, where sigma is the switch manifold. Okay. Is the separating man manifold here. Uh, a PSY smooth vector field Z is structurally stable if there is a neighborhood of it such that all PSY smooth vector fields on, it, on this neighborhood are sigma equivalent. Okay. Uh, at the literature, there are another definitions of uh, kinds, distinct kinds of equivalence. For example, uh, two uh, PSY smooth vector fields uh, can are called equivalent without the letter sigma before. Okay, if there exists an orientation preserving homeomorphism that sends orbits of Z to orbits of Z tilde. But at this last definition, we are not looking for, for what's happening in sigma, okay? And this produces some, some, some differences. But here in this, in this, in this talk, we will talk, we will, we will consider this this definition okay but let's see some uh, some the some differences between these two definitions for example um for example um, let me do a picture okay consider that we have here uh a psy smooth vector field such that Sorry, let me put it in a, another orientation, another way here. What? Okay, it's the same, but I think it's better to explain. So suppose that here we have a, a PSY smooth vector field such that the, the X vector field has a, a linear, Hyperbolics, uh, hyperbolic uh, fox here. And suppose that 
the another PSY smooth vector field, keeping the same y vector, okay? This is another vector field has a, a, a node, has a node, an attractor node too. So we have something like this. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. No. I mean, I, I'm. I I have to change the orientation. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Now it's okay. So we have two PSY smooth vector fields: the vector field Z and the vector field Z tilde. Well, it's possible to define um, uh, homeomorphism between Z and Z tilde, but but uh, and and, in, and for sure between z and z tilde but let's let let's see what's happening with sigma okay let's see what's happening with sigma if we we take a well first of all of course this this identification or this homeomorphism have to send this tangential point at this tangential point okay this is p and let's call this uh, HP. So let's consider a point P, P1 here. This is the point P1, okay? And if you uh, consider the, the X flow by P1, it uh, read, no, P1, no. no let, let, let's take P1 here, okay? P1 here. At the left of this, this that I that I drawn before. If you take the the x orbit by p1, it hits reach uh, sigma again at a at a point p2. Okay, so there is a time t t1 such that uh, this trajectory will reach sigma. Okay, this point P2 has a, a, a correspondent here. But let, let's look at what's happening with the correspondent to the point P1. The correspondent to the point P1, when we H P1, when we look for the for the Y. No, for the X tilde vector field, <clears throat> this, this trajectory will never come back to, to sigma. Will never come back to, to sigma. And uh, never will come back to, will, will, will return to HP2, okay? So in this sense, in this sense that, in this sense, sigma is not is not played to sigma tilde. Okay, so there is a, a difference here. The the vector fields, the piecewise smooth vector fields, are equivalent with this definition, but they are not sigma equivalent. Okay. Again, the, the, there are another example here. This is a kind of simple. And we have uh, another two PSY smooth vector fields. This one has, has its phase portrait, okay? Very simple. And this is another one has its phase portrait. Note that this last one, all points for this last one, all points here at the sigma are 
pseudo-equilíbrio, ok? There are a continuum of pseudo-equilibria here at sigma tilde. Which coincides with sigma, it's the same. It's the line, uh, the, the x axis, okay? But uh, there is a, a non-homorphism between them. There is a non-homorphism between them that is explicitly is this. This is a, a non-homorphism between this, these vector fields. And of course, the behavior of these vector fields are not the same. This vector field has a, a sliding dynamic here pointing to the, to the left, you know, okay? And this one has a, has a continuum of pseudo equilibria at sigma tilde. So this is because we will prefer this definition of equivalence, okay? This definition. Um, Okay. Ah, <laughs> this is important. I don't know if he, if he, Henrique, Professor Henrique Ponce is here, <laughs> but uh, I will talk about the some words. Let me see. I think no. Uh, I will talk some words about uh, the definition of orbits. PSY smooth vector fields. Well, here at this talk, we will follow the Filipov's approach, okay? Where the uniqueness of trajectories is not, is not uh, true for every point. At the literature, there are another definitions of, of, of orbits in PSY smooth vector fields like that one is, is shown at this paper, okay? What happened here at this paper? At this paper, the, the, the authors consider that for every point, there is, a, there is a unique trajectory for every point of the PSY smooth vector field, okay? So for example, um uh, when we are at the at the sliding let's consider the, the escaping okay the escaping is better to to explain when we are at the escaping region okay the trajectory passing through this point is the trajectory given by the sliding vector field just just this and uh, the, traje the trajectory will not uh, escape uh, using this, this, this X or Y trajectories, okay? So for each point, there is a single trajectory, there is a unique trajectory. And for example, if you, we, we are at, in, a, in a sliding region, what happens, what happens with the trajectory for this point? The trajectory for, the, for cutting through this point will be closer to, to sigma, but it will not reach sigma, okay? There is a separation here, and this trajectory will not reach sigma because at sigma, we are we will consider the, the sliding trajectory. And uh, uh, this is a different point of view that what is that what is that what the professor Henrique Ponce is using at his at his course. Uh, and why we prefer we will prefer these this, uh, definitions or where the, the non-uniqueness of trajectory is considered. 
because we think, we believe, that it's better to explain physical phenomena, okay? For example, um, uh, a simple difference between these two approaches is the possibility that uh, exists some sliding orbits like this one, okay? So if you, in our approach, if you take a point P here, it's possible to, to follow this path. And at this point, this is a, this is a, a, a point important for us. At this point, we, we take this, this sliding vector field and we can return again to P. This is not possible using the, let me see if I wrote this. If it's not possible, if it's not possible, if you, you if you, we use the Meirelli Pirximit approach, since at this point, we have a disconnection at the trajectory, okay? So at the Meirelli Pirximit approach, this is not, this cannot be, in any sense, a periodic orbit, because it's not an orbit itself. There is a separation of orbits here, okay? Moreover, uh, uh, it's possible for us that a trajectory meets an equilibrium for finite time, okay? For example, if you have a, a pseudo equilibrium for the pseudo equilibrium for the for the sliding vector field, it's possible that a, a, a Z or a Y trajectory meets this pseudo equilibrium for finite time. Okay, while if you if you we are at the Meirelli Simic Pug approach, these, tra these, these trajectories does not reach the pseudo equilibrium. In fact, the maximal interval of definition of these trajectories uh, are, fin are they, they are defined for finite time, okay? There is a thin time where these trajectories are defined. And here we can define the trajectory for infinite time. Uh, okay, this is a, a big difference here between the Filipov approach, okay? We are using the Filipov approach and not the meirelli pug simic approach. In fact, uh, meirelli pug simic C, uh, they, they talk at the third page of, the, of their paper, which is this, okay? That the, their definition of orbits is uh, distinct that what Filipov does, okay? So let's talk, let's uh, work with the Filipov approach where the non-uniqueness of trajectories by a, by a point is possible, okay? Uh, so let's go, so let's, Continue with the with a local with studying the local stability. So, um, for 
smooth smooth planar vector fields okay smooth smooth planar vector field it's possible uh, that uh, an equilibrium p has poorly imaginary aging values okay for example if we take the vector field given by this this expression okay Um, okay, this is we have a, a center here, and small perturbations of this vector field can produce vector fields with oh, sorry, okay, <laughs> with. Uh, uh, aging values presenting uh, non-zero non real parts. And this real part, uh, given essentially by this, this number, okay, can be positive or negative, giving rise to, uh, to an attractor focus or a repeller focus. So, uh, there are distinct topological behavior near an equilibrium point like this, okay? So we will say in this case that it, it, occurs, a, it occurs a bifurcation, bifurcation because the vector field is not structurally stable and uh, near this vector field, we can found another vector fields with distinct topological behaviors. But here is a, uh, we will put this in a, in a colloquial language, okay? But how complex or complicated, complicated, maybe it's a better word, can be uh, the behavior of a structurally unstable vector field. Uh, in fact, some uh, structure, structurally unstable vector field are, are, okay, in a colloquial way, are well defined, are well behaved, since we can find just a small number of topological, of distinct topological behaviors on its neighborhood. But some of them have a, are more complicated, and there are several distinct topological behavior, including chaos on its neighborhood. Okay. Um, in order to measure the richness of behavior in a neighborhood of a vector field, we establish, establish the concept of codimension, okay? Here at this talk, we will present two distinct, very distinct ways to define codimension. The first one is uh, a topology, is a, has a topological point of view. And is, it is given uh, to the best of my knowledge for the first time at this, at this paper, okay? And what's happening here? Um, for example, if we have a, a vector field, Defined in a neighborhood Q of P, okay. We will consider the 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 some some sets here. The first one is this, okay, which is the set of vector fields that is that are stru locally structurally stable, okay. All structural Structurally stable vectors fields we put in this set. And this will be called the codimension zero 
local bifurcation set. Now, if you uh, if you uh, take off this this set, this previous set of the set of all vector fields, we have another omega one set. Okay, and inside this omega one set, we will define another uh, another set which is composed by vector fields which are locally structurally stable relative to omega one. Okay, and this we will call the uh, codimension one local bifurcation set. And we can do this uh, for, for two, for three, for four, okay? We can consider this the same structure, the schedule, to, to, to construct the codimension to local bifurcation set and, 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 and another for a, for any another positive integer, but let me let me explain what is this because some people have some confusion or uh, a little conf have a can confuse can produce some confusion with this definition and. Let me, let me explain a little, a little more about this definition. Uh, okay. Um, um, let me see what, the, okay. Consider, that, consider a, a, a vector field with a focus here, okay? A stable focus. This is a vector field X and consider a vector field Y presenting a uh, sigma, okay? Presenting um, an invisible fold. Okay, uh, I put here, F can be, can be called F plus and y can be called f minus. Again, this is a, this was explained by Professor Henrique Pons, and, and here I agree with him, <laughs> okay? Uh, f plus and f minus, I think it really is a better notation here, but uh, we will follow at this, this curse, the, the worst notation using, X and Y. Um, so, if you we we glue this these vector fields, what what we can we can have here? We can have a a, a Z vector field, a pressurized smooth vector field, presenting um, a, a focus here, a focus at the origin. Okay. Uh, uh, boundary equilibrium, a boundary equilibrium. Okay, this focus will 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 be placed at the origin. And here, the trajectories make something like this. Okay, they they are there are a, a, a spiral here. So. Uh, let's consider two, two parameters here. A parameter lambda that uh, moves this, this uh, fold point to the right or to the left, okay? It is placed at, at first at the origin, but uh, we, can, we can impose here a, a parameter Lambda that moves this this fold to the right or to the left, and we we will put another parameter alpha 
that moves the, the focus down and up, okay? So this is the, this is the case where alpha is zero and lambda also is zero. <clears throat> but so we, we can we can draw here um, uh, a lambda alpha plane, okay? And and the 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 original case. This one is the case where alpha is zero and lambda is zero. When both uh, alpha and beta are not zero, we are in we are we are in a stable situation. Okay, you agree with this? For example, if you if the if alpha is positive and I don't know uh, lambda is positive. Ah, one important thing here is that this this uh, this 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 straight line where the where the 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 x vector field <clears throat> is orthogonal to the to the gradient of the of sigma okay considering that sigma is a straight line this 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 straight line is vertical to the x axis okay so we have here uh, a stable situation here we have a crossing region here we also have a crossing region, region, and at the middle between these two points, we have a, a sliding region. But this configuration is structurally structurally stable. Okay, so and and uh, in each one of these these open sets here, okay, this open set, this open set, this and this, we have uh, structurally stable uh, vector fields. So this set, this set, uh, phi zero P uh, is composed by the vector fields that are placed here, 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 and here, okay? The vector fields that are placed at this at this intersection of, of uh, straight lines are not structurally stable. So they are in this set omega, omega one, okay? But let's look for these vector fields that, that are placed at these straight lines. For example, let's take a, a vector field here. What's happened with a vector field here at this? this semi straight line. The phase portrait of a vector field here is such that the, since alpha is zero, we have, a, uh, we have the focus uh, over the origin, okay? And uh, since uh, lambda is positive, the the, the fold point is placed at the right of the origin. And so we have a situation like this, okay? We have a situation like this. And this is a, and, and note that all points, all points in an, all points, no, all vector fields in a neighborhood here, okay? So for example, if you take a lambda zero, a positive lambda zero here, for all lambda belonging to lambda zero minus a, a, an epsilon, lambda zero plus an epsilon, okay? For all vector fields, not points, but vector fields 
at this neighborhood under inside this line okay over this line uh, the behavior is the same the behavior is the same so the the behavior of this of this vector field is structurally stable over omega 1 okay and this is the the codimension one uh, local bifurcation set here the same happens at this at this semi straight line okay here here is the same here and here so all vector fields uh, at these semi straight lines belong 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 to the uh, could mention one local bifurcation set. And of course, this vector field here belongs to, to the two omega two, okay? Two omega two, continuing here. And uh, it's, it's, the, it's the only vector field, guess why smooth vector field here that belong to the codimension to local bifurcation set. Okay. I hope uh, it's it's more it's more clear here. It's cleaner. This definition of codimension zero, one, two, and so on. Okay. Questions, please. Um, using this previous definition um, in this paper, okay. This is a, a, a famous paper concerning PSY smooth vector field. A very uh, used paper for a large number of authors, okay. In this paper, it's characterized the codimension zero local PSY smooth vector fields in R2. Okay, in R2. And these vector fields are those ones such that uh, the, the origin is a regular point. Okay. Or what what is a regular point? It's a um, what is a regular point? Hmm? It's a um, I define I have defined this uh, yes no, in the last in the last talk, but it's a point where the where we have a, a crossing region or where we have a a sliding vector field, but it's not a, um, okay, a sliding or a, an escaping vector field, or even if we have a, a, an hyperbolic pseudo equilibrium, okay? If the origin is a regular point, or a generic singularity, which corresponds to this, to this case, then the PSY smooth vector field is locally, structurally stable, okay, in R2. So the set of structurally, locally, structurally stable in R2 are composed by <coughs> these PSY smooth vector fields. Okay, and so um, the previous the, the proof of the previous result, result is, is based on the obtaining of canonical forms, okay? For example, if you, we, we are in this situation, okay, for this regular point, 
uh, it's possible to prove that n vector field, n PSY smooth vector field, having a having a, a, a sliding. No, this is the crossing, okay? <laughs> having a sliding, this is the water. Having a sliding region, all PSY smooth vector field having a sliding region near the, the origin is sigma equivalent to this canonical form, okay? This canonical form is uh, yes. uh, this has this, this phase portrait, okay? But for example, the, the, the vector field Z, this is Z tilde, okay? The vector field Z can be nonlinear, okay? And also sigma can be no can be cannot be a, a straight line. So we can have a, a thing like this, more complicated situation. But these vector fields are sigma equivalent. In fact, uh, in order to, to construct such a homeomorphism, we we will start with points at C in sigma and sigma tilde. So for example, here is sigma and here, oh, oh. and here a straight line, uh, the, the x axis, okay? And here is the sigma. Let's consider here the, the origin and also here is the, the origin, okay? There is no matter with the origin. <clears throat> but since the, the, point, the point P is a, is a regular point of the sliding vector field and the origin is a, a regular point of the tilde, okay? So we have here a point P, and here a point P tilde. Since, you, since passing through P, we, we have uh, the sliding vector field. Uh, by, the, by the flow box theorem applied to this un unidimensional vector field, okay? Here we have a, a, a unidimensional vector field and here too. So applying the, the flow box theorem for this, for this unidimensional uh, manifold, we can, we can produce a homeomorphism between this, the, the vector fields Z, Z, tilde, Z and Z tilde restricted to this sets, okay? And outside these sets, what uh, we do is the following. For example, um, if we take a point here, since here we have a, a, an sliding vector, an sliding region, okay? This point will, will the trajectory by this point will reach sigma, in a point P1, but this point P1 has a, a correspondent here, okay? This point P1 has a, a correspondent here, has a correspondent here, and uh, passing through this point P, P1 tilde, there is a, a X tilde trajectory, and the time that the, the, the x vector field expands to go from, uh, I, I don't put a name here, for, from a point X, R to the point P1 can be considered here, here in, an, in an opposite direction in order to, to found a point R tilde that is in correspondence 
we that points r okay and so on we we can do this for every points in a in a neighborhood of this region okay even for points here at the at the side of sigma okay it's the same and so we have a, a homeomorphism between z and z tilde for all points in a neighborhood of the origin okay and this is the the way that the the homeomorphism is constructed the, it's it's similar okay similar for the other for the other case this, this is this is easy okay Const the construction of the homomorph the homeomorphism for this case is easy this is this is kind of is true but here we will use the we will have a, an equilibrium an equilibrium of the sliding vector field okay so we, we have a to, we have to use the Grobman Hartman theorem but this is done uh, with details at this paper. Let me see if I have to stop here. No, let me talk some, let me talk more two minutes. Uh, the same and analogous can be done for PSY smooth vector fields defined in R3, okay? In R3, there, are, there is this paper concerning the construction of, home, of this kind of homeomorphisms for the, for the structurally stable vector fields in R3. In fact, the set of uh, such stable vector fields we will call delta, where this is delta is the union of these four sets where the first one is the set of uh, PSY smooth vector fields presenting uh, a regular point for both X and Y and either you know, at the origin, okay? Always considering the origin and either it's a it's a sigma regular point or a hyperbolic pseudo equilibrium. It's just the same what we have here for for plan for the planar case. Okay, it's just the same we have here for planar for the planar case. Um, the set delta two is the set of of vector fields presenting a ah, fold point of X and a regular point of Y, for example, but we are in, in R3 now. <laughs> uh, in R3, we have a, a thing like this. We have, for example, uh, a line of, of uh, tangential points. Now let, me, let me picture this in another way. There is a line of, of tangents points here corresponding to the x vector field and the y vector field is transverse, okay? This is a, a strictly stable uh, situation in R3. Uh, uh, um, the set delta three is the set of vector of PSY smooth vector fields presenting a, uh, an isolated cusp point uh, for one vector field and uh, the other vector field transverse. For example, let me do a picture in some place. Maybe here. For example, we can have a, a cusp point here. Okay, this is an isolated cusp point. And near this isolated cusp point, we have fold points 
in one side we have uh, visible fold points and at the other branch we have invisible fold points okay and the other vector field is transversal to sigma and the last set the set delta four is the set of two fold singularities is the set of vector fields presenting a two-fold singularity at the origin. But there is some, some, uh, some objects that, some two-fold singularities that we will not consider here because we will consider just the parabolic or hyperbolic two-fold singularities. For example, a parabolic two-fold singularity is a, is a Fold singular where uh, both uh, uh, tangents uh, are concave to the same side, like a This is a parabolic type. And the hyperbolic type is when both are, are visible, okay? These, uh, these, these vector fields are strictly stable. But, but, But there are another kinds of of uh, fold two fold singularities that are not that can be not structurally stable. It is the case of the Teixeira singularity, where it's the elliptical case, where we have a uh, in one side an invisible uh, fold and the other side also has an invisible fold, okay? It is called the Teixeira singularity, which, which has a, a high order codimension as is, is proved at these papers. Um, I would like to, to show you how to construct the homeomorphism for the three-dimensional case, okay? Douglas, are you there? Uh, I'm ready. Can I, can I, okay. I think I, I, you, it will be okay. better. Yeah, let, let, let's make a break and I return with this after the break. Okay, so thank you, Chago. Any, any comments, questions? Uh, if not, let's have a break now and we come back in 10 minutes, okay? Okay, okay. <laughs> Are you ready to resume your lecture? I'm not, I, I was not found in the, the buttons. <laughs> okay, let for the for this the second part, um, I will give you some some ideas of how how can we construct the homeomorphisms for three for these three dimensional uh, st locally strictly stable vector fields. So, for example, if we have this this situation where there is a, a visible uh, uh, fold or the, or the X vector field has a, a visible fold and the Y vector field is transversal to sigma, okay? It is equivalent to a, to a vector field uh, present in a canonical form with, uh, with linear situations, okay, with a linear 
uh, x tilde and the linear <coughs> y tilde. Okay, let's let's see how we can construct this homeomorphism. The idea is the is analogous the the that we presented for for the for the planar case. We have to to divide the domain where the vector fields are defined into some pieces, and we define the the, the homeomorphism in such pieces. So in order to, to do this, the first piece here that we will consider is, I put a number one here, the first piece, is this uh, sigma, uh, in this case is sigma s. This is a, a sliding region, okay? This is a sliding region. So it's possible to prove that under this sliding region, I will picture it here, there is a, a, a regular vector field, okay? Converging, uh, pointing at the direction of the, of the sigma, of the, the fold line. So this is the fold line. Okay, it's possible to prove. So using the, the same happens here, okay? For this uh, sliding region in the flow box theorem, we can uh, produce induce uh, an homeomorphism between these regions. Okay, and so on. Uh, it is defined to the the homeomorphism at inside uh, over the fold lines okay over the fold lines extending the homeomorphism uh, obtained at the regions okay so the region is this one and so homeomorphism is defined here i forgot when i was uh, writing I forgot this, these two regions, this and this. And so I put two line and two, two lines. <laughs> so uh, following the same we done before for the planar case, I don't know if you remember, but we take the times here and look for the negative times here too, okay? So proceeding at the, the, the same way, since this point is in relation with this point, for example, we consider the time expanded here and take it negatively in a negative way here. And we, we have an equivalence between this point and this one, okay? And so these trajectories are related to the same for the region two to light, which is this, okay? The region uh, that will, that the point of points that will uh, meet sigma s. The same can be done here. Now, the, the third region is the, the, the crossing region, okay? This is a crossing region. For this region, uh, it seems to be to be easier, but it's not because we have uh, the homeomorphism defined here, okay? And for each point at the crossing region, we have to to consider a, a, the, a straight line. For example, if you, if you consider a straight plane here, okay, a straight plane, I will not picture the plane because it will be difficult to see. But the intersection of the a straight plane and sigma will produce a curve here. And the same can be done here, okay? And there is a curve here, not a trajectory, but just a curve. And uh, all points here can be related 
two points here using the distance between this point and uh in this point one in this point here okay this is clear for all points at the crossing region we can relate we can relate we can produce this homeomorphism extend extend the homer the homeomorphisms already defined at the fold curve to the points at the crossing region using this argument. And so we, we consider the, for example, this point is related with this. So we consider the trajectory passing through here, the X trajectory passing through this point. And for example, we will obtain this point. It's expanding the same time, we, expand, we, we have a point here and we can do this, this this schedule for all points at this region four and at this region five okay the same the same can be done we can extend the homeomorphism which is already defined at this uh, fold curve to the points uh, with uh, uh, over the trajectories which are tangents to sigma, okay? With, using the same argument, if we, we have this point is related with this point, and so if we have a, a positive time, we, we will be at this point, expand the same time here, we will relate these two points at six and at seven, which are at this, to this tangent to manifold here okay uh it's we already haven't defined uh inside inside in some sense okay inside this 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 uh tangents manifold so for a point here what we do is Uh, by the implicit function, the is possible to obtain uh, a transversal section of uh, the vector field passing through the, the, the fold line. And so, uh, using a similar argument that you you that we that we use it to construct the the to extend the homomorphism here for the crossing region we can consider points here uh, related to points in a orthogonal plane here okay and so the points with negative times will be at the right and the point for positive times will be at the left of this uh, transversal section. In this way, all points in the neighborhood of the origin, okay, have a equivalent uh, with a point at the, at the yeah, in a neighborhood of the origin for Z tilde. Okay, this is a way of constructing a homeomorphism between these two uh, SY smooth vector fields. This is kind of technical, and I, I hope you you understand that at least uh, the main ideas. So. Uh, there is another way to define codimension. Okay, the the first one we, we saw before was using the a topological point of view that I have tried to explain using this this example. Okay, if you remember, 
So, but there, there is another way to define uh, the a dimension of a singularity. That uh, is the following, using uh, versal and mini-versal unfoldings. So if you have a, a family of differential equations depending on parameters on a, an n-dimensional, a k-dimensional parameter epsilon, okay? Um, we will say that the, this family is, that another family is topologically equiv equivalent to the family two. Okay, this is the family two. If there is this uh, a homeomorphism depending continuously on epsilon that preserves, this is important here again, that preserves uh, sigma and takes uh, orbits of one system, two orbits of the another system, family of systems, okay? In other words, a topological equivalence of families is a sigma equivalence of systems, depending continuously on the parameters. So, um, another family is said to be induced. induced. Sorry, um, sorry, Tiago. In, si? in your previous yes. uh, slide, you are assuming also that the, the vector field on sigma is preserved also, no? Yes. Thank you. Yes, uh, because we are following the sigma equivalence that I, I, def I have defined before. Um, okay, so another family is said to be induced from two if it's obtained from two by a continuous change of param parameters, okay? This means that uh, there exists a continuous map a continuous map uh, doing, doing this. Okay, we can change. We, we have a parameter me that is related with the, the parameter epsilon of Z, of the family Z. The unfolding two, Remember, the only two is always this, uh, this one, okay. The unfolding two is said to be topologically versal, is said to be a topological versal unfolding of Z zero, of Z zero, if every other unfolding of the same specialized vector field Z zero is equivalent to that one induced from two, okay? A version unfolding involving the smallest number of parameters is called a mini versal unfold, okay? When you have, when, when, you, when, you, when it's possible to, to obtain all topological types around a vector field Z0 using the smallest number of parameters, we will say that we have a mini versal unfold. And this number of parameters is the codimension of the singularity, okay? If we are defining the vector field Z0 in a neighborhood of a, a point, a singular, a point which will be a singularity, uh, at zero, y, y zero. Okay, so the codimension of uh, singularity is the smallest number of parameters that com completely describe describe describes the the topological types obtained by a family Z, a family Z epsilon, for example. 
okay this is the the concept of uh, uh codimension using versal and mini versal unfoldings i believe that this is this this approach is more uh, classical in the literature okay professor torregrossa is doing a is presenting a course uh, that uh, explore this more properly in a better way. Uh, okay. Um, so, sorry, Tiago, again. Uh, before you start with the global objects, could, yeah. could you, maybe there are people in the audience that is the first time that the, the, the Teixeira singularity appears, no? C can you explain just with pictures, for example, why why it is not uh, structurally stable, this uh, yes, invisible, sure. invisible fault? Thank you. Yes. Let me take it, take it back here. Well, the, the Teixeira singularity is a, is a three-dimensional singularity. Dimensional for first, okay. Singularity where we have the following we have a line of uh, fold points for the vector field x, okay, and a line of, of tangents for the vector field uh, y. These lines uh, meet, meet itself, each one of them. In a single point, this this intersection is transversal. Okay, uh, we do not, we are not uh, uh, that have a, a non-transversal intersection. <clears throat> this is the the T singularity, the T shira singularity. And why this, this singularity is not uh, structurally stable? Well, there is a, a lot of uh, arguments that, that I can use here. But for example, it's possible to obtain a specific kind, a specific kind of the singularity such that it's happening the following. Follow the same orientation. That is happening the following. So look that that this 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 region is a crossing region. Okay. This region is a is an, a sliding region. This region is, a, is again a crossing region. <clears throat> and this region is a escaping region. So it's possible to, to have trajectories that depart from here and crash sigma again here. And, it, and then it, it, this is a, a Z. A, uh, X, an X trajectory, okay? And it, it, it's possible that a uh, Y trajectory, trajectory departs from this point and, and go to, to any place in this, in this same plane, okay? But there are specific families of vector fields where this trajectory will meet exactly this same point, okay? Moreover, we can produce this kind of behavior for infinitely many trajectories here. Moreover, it's possible to construct a plane, a transversal plane here, where Every trajectory here at this plane 
every trajectory here and at this plane, I will picture this plane here, okay? It's closed. So the singularity, so the singularity uh, for this case behaves like a center, okay? And, and it's possible to prove also that the trajectories outside this plane are co converging to this plane, okay? For example, let me picture it again. So uh, this, this, this line here is the intersection of the plane and sigma, okay? It's possible to prove that a point here comes to here and returns to a point that it is near this, this line, okay? So there is a kind of convergence here. So this, 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 um, of this case portrait, this, this center, behaves like, like um, an attractor here. Okay, but a center is not a structurally stable configuration. Okay, this is a kind of planar, planar center, and this 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 uh, behavior is not structurally stable because it is, it is not uh, present at the the, the theorem. 3.5 of, of this paper, okay? The, the center is not a regular point, nor a generic singularity. So uh, vector fields uh, presenting a T-singularity a t -singularity, uh, can be strictly unstable, okay? It's okay, Professor. Sorry, Thank Professor. you very much. Very clear explanation. I can be. I can. I can talk more about this <laughs> because because we we did this. We followed this approach at these two papers uh, in order to prove that the single the the Teixeira singularity is not extremely stable. Okay. Um, however, kinds of the singularities that are structurally stable, okay? This is important to say that it's possible to obtain some speci very specific kinds of the singularities that are uh, structurally stable. But since there are some, some one of them, some one of them uh, that are not structurally stable, we cannot put this, this kind of singularity here at our set, our structurally stable set, okay? Obtained at this paper. So let's go to the, the global stability. How, how I, I told before, uh, is concerned the, the local stability, okay? We are looking for a neighborhood of a point. But now let's look for a global phenomenon. For example, it's a global phenomenon, the, the occurrence of a closed orbit, okay? Uh, closed and known singular orbit. So a closed orbit passing through sigma, will be called uh, a pseudo closed orbit. For example, in R2, for example, an, an orbit, a crossing orbit like this, or even, and because of this, uh, we are considering the, the Filipov approach, okay? 
and not the Meirelles, Meirelles Simic Pilge approach. And also is a periodic orbit, this orbit here, okay? Passing through a fold point, sliding here and departing sigma at this specific point, okay? These two kinds of similarity of uh, pseudo closed orbits are possible. Moreover, if it's an uh, isolated pseudo closed orbit, it will be called a pseudo limit cycle, following the same uh, the same names that uh, that we you we that we use it for the smooth case. A, a pseudo limit cycle is hyperbolic. There are two types here. The first one is the crossing limit cycle. This means a, a limit cycle passing just to uh, crossing points, okay? So a uh, crossing limit cycle is hyperbolic if the first return map has the derivative distinct of one, okay? Just like it happens for the, for the smooth case. But there, there is this kind of uh, pseudo closed orbit too. And for this kind of pseudo orbits, it's possible to define a, 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 a hyperbolist. So if he, the, the closed orbit meets sigma, uh, if this intersection contains only uh, points of uh, the sliding region or, or <laughs> just points of the escaping region or, okay, this is an, an exclu excluding or. It's not possible to have uh, for a for a hyperbolic pseudo limit cycle have two points uh, of both regions, okay? Except by a finite number of fold irregular points, okay? These affinite numbers of of fold irregular points like this one. So the closest orbit is hyperbolic, okay? This is a definition. But why this is definition? Because it's possible to prove that, okay, I, I, do, I do it here. Because it's possible to prove that near, that, that near a vector field presenting this configuration, this space portrait, all other vector fields also have, uh, a limit cycle like this, okay? Uh, here is the idea of the proof, just uh, in two lines, okay? How, how, can, how can, can we uh, construct this, this, this stability? How can we prove this stability? So in order to prove this stability, it's enough to construct a, a flow box around this, this, uh, this, no, it's, it's wrong here. No, it's wrong, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, it's wrong, it's, it's, it's picture, the orientations are wrong, okay? Because we have to have this, this orientation, okay? This orientation, not this, this one. Because with the orientation that I put before, we have a, a, a crossing region here. It's not the, the case. We must have a sliding region, okay? So it's, it's wrong here. The orientation is that. Okay, so it's possible to construct a, a, a flow box, a box containing this, this, this curve, okay? 
this this uh, close to the orbit using the Poincaré Benson theorem for PS wise move vector field we are able to prove that all other vector fields uh, since the, the intersection here is transversal okay with the boundary of this box all other vector fields near z also have a, a closed orbit like this okay um, as we said before this paper okay that i will, will explain the, the the main result now this paper uh, presents a version of the Peixoto's theorem for PS for planar or bidimensional, okay, uh, PS wise move vector fields. In fact, the result is the following the, the theorem 26 is the following. If M is a compact bidimensional manifold with boundary, they, they, they are done the, the case with boundary. If you remember too, I, I told you about the Poincaré Benson theorem with and without boundary. They are they are work with they are working with the the case with boundary. <clears throat> the set GR M uh, R is the the is the the differentiability class of the vector field involved here is open and dense in the set of all PSYs in the vector field, where this set G R M is the intersection, not the union, but the intersection of four uh, sets, where the first one is the set of uh, PSYs in the vector fields where the equilibria and the pseudo equilibria are, are hyperbolic and infinite number. G2, GR2 is the set of uh, PSY's vector field such that the closed orbit, the closed orbits and the pseudo closed orbits are infinite number, hyperbolic, and this is important, because the, the, the manifold has a boundary. And these this closed orbits does not meet each one of these closed orbits does, does not meet the boundary of M, okay? For example, it's not possible. This is the... Uh, uh, the boundary of M, it's not possible that uh, a closed orbit uh, has a, a contact with this. Uh, note that sigma, it, this, this boundary is not sigma, okay? Sigma can be here, and it's possible to be the, there exists a, a, a limit, a pseudo limit cycle here, but this pseudo limit cycle. Uh, cannot meet the boundary of sigma, okay? The set GR3 is the set of PSY smooth vector field, such that there is no tangents or pseudo equilibria at the boundary of M uh, intersection sigma. This means that this is sigma and this is the boundary of M. We are not uh, alone that uh, there exists a tangent point here, okay, at the intersection. This is a matter, okay? And we are not uh, uh, permitting the, extent, the, exist, the existence of equilibria, okay? Still the equilibrium at this, this, this point, this intersection point. The G4 uh, 
uh, set is the set of uh, vector fields, pessoal, no vector fields, such that there is no separatrices connection. Here I including uh, separatrices of uh, of tangents with the boundary. Okay, here is the boundary of n. Uh, separatrices connections like something like this, with here uh, a equilibrium or a pseudo equilibrium points, okay? All kinds of separatrices of connections, including separatrices of uh, separatrices of uh, saddles of another similarities, and uh, separatrices of tangents. Separatrices of tangents are these, these points, okay? Separat this is a separatrix of a tangents, this is another. So this is the the, aver the version of the Peixoto theorem for PSY smooth vector field for bidimensional bidimensional PSY smooth vector fields. Again, I don't read it in here, but again, you can you can prove this the theorem for R three or R four. Okay. You are invited to do this. This is not done in the literature. And of course, breaking one or more of the previous hypothesis, we obtain a piecewise move vector field, which is not uh, structurally stable. Okay, so breaking one or more of the previous hypothesis, hypothesis we have uh, uh, bifurcations, uh, bifurcations, okay, and I have more, some, I have some notes yet, and let's talk about bifurcations. First, we will talk about uh, unknown bifurcations concerning smooth vector fields, okay? Move vector fields here. It's uh, it's the Andronov hop bifurcation. So we have a, a vector field, a smooth vector field, and using polar coordinates, it's possible. The, it's on either side, okay. Using polar coordinates, is here it's, it's the polar coordinates. It's possible to to write in the to to write the previous this vector field into this form, okay? Using polar coordinates. Now, let's let's think about this vector field. Since the so here here we have the the phase portrait of this vector of this vector field. Since the 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 variation of the angle is is constant, okay, we know that the trajectories will will uh, will do a movement like this, okay. But uh, R equal to zero always is a is a zero of the variation of the radius. So the origin is uh, an equilibrium. Okay, so the origin is an equilibrium. Moreover, when lambda is smaller than zero, we get the variation of the radius is zero. This is zero. If and only if R is zero. Okay. If and only if R is zero. And so for any other radius, we have that uh, R dot is negative, okay? 
So if lambda is negative, we, it means that the trajector, the trajectories will be uh, turning around the origin at the one clock sense. Okay. So it's a, a an attractor focus in this case. Okay, for lambda negative. For lambda equal to zero, for lambda equal to zero here, we have a, a R dot equal to uh, minus R3, okay? So again, the, the zero of the variation of R happens just and only just R is zero, okay? And the same behavior happens here. But in this case, the, the origin is not a hyperbolic equilibrium. This is a, what we call a, a weak focus, okay? And for the case where lambda is positive, we have a, a root here of this second part of the, this expression, okay? So, moreover, R, R always is positive. We haven't this case where R is negative, okay? It's not happening because R is the, the radius. So, when R, when lambda is positive, we have the origin, but also we have uh, uh, that, uh, that trajectory with the R equal to uh, this number doesn't present variation on R, okay? So, the, so R is constant uh, along with this, this curve. And the variation of R is positive inside this curve. This positive means that R is growing when we are doing these this turns around the origin. And you know, the variation of R is negative outside this curve, okay? So we have here a limit cycle, an attractive limit cycle. This is the 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 Andronov bifurcation that has a let me see. Okay, this that has a, a bifurcation di diagram like this. Okay. If lambda is negative, we have a Uh, an attractive focus if lambda is zero we have a, a weak focus attractive and if lambda is positive here's the, the lambda parameter okay and if lambda is positive we have here um, um, repulsive limit cycle, okay? This is the bifurcation diagram of this bifurcation. Okay? Um, this, this kind of bifurcation also occurs for PSY smooth vector fields. In fact, if you have this to this, this z vector field, okay? He must be a, an alpha. Uh, if you have this, this z vector field, what's happening here? So first, first of all, let me do the, all the calculations here, okay? First of all, 
the, the, the there's with many food is the is the z axis okay <laughs> um, moreover the lead the first lead derivative is given by this okay doing the calculation this means that we are making the inner product of z in the gradient of eight okay so this first lead derivative is zero just when z is equal to alpha moreover z no uh, x is equal to alpha moreover the second lead derivative is always minus one and so we have uh, an invisible food point for x this means that we are in a configure in a phase portrait like this and how can i say if the the arrows are pointing to the left or to the right to the right looks look let's look for the for the z for the x vector field and note that the first coordinate here it's is one so the at the x direction it's it's positive at the x direction it's pointing to the to the place where z or where x is positive the same can be done for for y okay and we have an invisible for the point of y at the origin so the, the phase portrait when alpha is zero is uh, this one okay uh, not not this one exactly because because here i have uh i know uh this factor is not just minus one so here the vector field this, this vector field is not the second vector field here is not uh Is not reversible uh, uh, here. There, there is this, this difference between. Sorry again. These two trajectories does not coincide here. Okay, don't coincide. Don't coincide. Coincide here. So again, repeating the same ideas of the of the Andronov hop bifurcation when uh, alpha is negative when alpha is negative what's happening here when alpha is negative we are this is the origin okay we are putting our uh, fold point x fold point at here okay and it is it is appearing I am um, sliding region here which contains uh, an attractive pseudo equilibrium okay this can be can be done with the with a calculation using the sliding vector field when alpha is zero we have this this case okay this is the case where alpha is negative. And when alpha is positive, what, what is happening here? When alpha is positive, the, the fold point is placed at the, the right of the origin. And there is an escaping uh, pseudo equilibria here. And also, and also, a uh, uh, limit cycle here. Okay, why this limit cycle? I haven't no, I haven't so much time <laughs> because if you if you look for this picture, 
we have a thing like this, okay? And this configuration, and this, this, uh, this distance, okay? This distance, if we, we impose just a, a small perturbation on X, this distance also exists here for alpha positive, okay? For alpha positive. And so we have this uh, repulsive. And so we have this repulsive singularity here. And I don't know if he, maybe here. Just a moment. Uh, okay, yeah. And since here the trajectories are enter, entering this this region, it we have to to have here a uh, an attractor uh, limit cycle because of the Poincaré Benson theorem. Okay, the trajectories entering this region must converge to some place. And these trajectories will not converge to this point because it is a, a repulsive point. So they must converge to a, to a limit cycle. Okay, this is a, a like, I don't know how bifurcation for vector field, vector fields, and this is enough for today. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Thiago. Uh, any question, comments? Okay. Mm, professor? Okay. Uh, uh, I have a question about, um, can you give an example for um, versal fold and the mini versal fold? Mm, the, Yes, about this. This is the definitions. Mm, yes, can you give an uh, example? The version is here. I don't, I don't, I can't understand the, the, the the question. Um, uh, can you give a example for this definitions? Example of the definitions. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, well. Um, Short words. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tiago, may, maybe you can think in, on it and you, pre, you can prepare a short example for Friday to answer this question. Maybe it's better, no? Because you can yeah. explain with more time. What do you think? Yeah, I can explain this. Uh, but I, but because we, we, we use this, this definition in order to prove that the, the fold-fold singularity, the planar fold-fold singularity, okay, uh, giving rise to a center here, we use this definition in order to prove that this, this planar fold-fold singularity has an infinite codimension, okay? So we, we use this, this approach in order to prove this. This means that we, we, we present, we exhibit uh, uh, the, 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 the mini-verse one for, the, for, the, for this family. But this is not so, so easy to, <laughs> to say now. Okay. But it's possible. But a simple example is the following. 
this 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 single this this singular that I present here for you. This one, this one, okay, this one, this singular a a fold a uh, uh, a focus equilibria uh, with a fold point. We we produce here a bifurcation using two parameters, okay. You can you can produce another family of PSY smooth vector field presenting the same the same bifurcation the same kind of bifurcation using more parameters, okay? Mm -hmm. But the mini universal unfolding is the unfolding that that uh, that you observe that uh, where you can see all the topological types that uh, in a neighborhood of this 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 vector field, but with the small number of parameters. Okay, this is the universal unfolding. We, you can produce the same the same bifurcation here, the same bifurcation, but using more parameters. And the and the, it is an unfolding of the singularity, but the unfolding using the the, the smallest number of parameters will be the the mini-versal unfolding and not just a versal unfolding. This is, this is clear. I believe that the, your question is in this line, no? Okay, thank you. Thank you for the nice talk. Thank you. Yeah, perhaps the, the last example you showed about the hopeful bifurcation is a mini-versal mini unfolding, isn't it? Yeah. Because you, we are using just one one parameter to for the singularity, and there are and you can use and you pro, can produce another families with a lot of parameters, doing the same, but uh, the small number of parameters uh, unfolding the singularity is in this case one, and so the codimension of the singularity is one. Okay, let me put here. Yes, I'm I'm uh, doing the, the the unfolding of this this singlet with just one parameter. Of course, we can choose another family. Okay, I'm using this family, but you can use another family. Uh, for example, you can use another family here. I change. I have changed just the position of the the fold point of the z of the x vector field. You can you can consider another family with a parameter changing the changing the position of the fold of the x fold and another parameter changing the position of the y fold. Two parameters, but using these two parameters you will have the same bifurcation, the, the same uh, topological types near the singularity, okay? So you have families with two parameters and you have families with just one parameter. So this, the, the, the co-dimension of, of the singularity is uh, one and not two, okay? It's easy to, to, to see a, a family with two parameters. It's not to put here a beta, okay? This mm -hmm. will, will make the, the Y vector field has a, a fold that can be, can be changed of position. Alpha make this for, for Z, X and beta can make this for Y. So we have two parameters but the unfolding will have the same topological types. So the family which produces all topological types using the last, the smallest number of parameters is the first one with just one parameter. I hope that I, I it's not necessary to, to do the other example, <laughs> okay? Tomorrow on Friday. <laughs> okay. Thank you, thank you. Any other question? Comments? So uh, thank you, Tiago, again. 
and we are going to, to have a, a break now and we return uh, 5.30 with the, the last lecture, today's lecture.